when I found puppetry as a child, it just made sense because it was all of my interests, making things, performing, making up stories, and also, you know, right now in the world and in the theater, we're having all these discussions about gender yeah. and diversity and uh, all of that, which is fantastic. But I realized I've always played with gender mm -hmm. because when I was little and even now, I play old women, young women, young men, mythical characters, animals that talk. So puppetry to me was this key to unlocking all those things that in theater school, I was told you will always be this height, this skin color, and male. And so those are the roles you will play forever. And I thought, no, I've already been the witch and the three pigs. Why would I want to just be an actor? I see. Yeah. That leads me to a question. Seeing you or hearing you in a venue like this, filling the whole room for two and a half hour with your charisma and your voice, mm. how did you manage to get this venue-filling voice? I was trained, you know, and I still train. Um, you know, during the pandemic, my physical self kind of got soft. It's coming back. But uh, vocally, I work constantly with uh, a singing teacher, or especially in the last five years, a speech pathologist who manipulates my vocal cords to raise my larynx. He literally strangles me for an hour. Oh my God. And so before I go on tour, I book two appointments with him. And so I went back to him before coming here and he raised my larynx and relaxed my vocal cords because most actors who work a lot acoustically, um, which is rare now, most people are miked, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, rely on steroids or other things that you take to mm -hmm. plump up your vocal cords. And uh, I don't want to do that. That's no. too crazy. I'm happy you don't do that. I, I did do that. Most of Broadway is on steroids. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I did. But it makes you crazy and sweaty and it, it's not pleasant. So, yes, I've, I've always had um, a good voice and a natural four and a half octave range to play with. Yeah, so, so you can play all these different characters. Yeah, yeah. And what led you to the decision to, because I have seen other shows of you and you, normally you are on a stage yeah. and the audience is the audience. Yeah. What led you to the decision to have this immersive play? Because I had gone to shows that were uh, publicized as immersive. So I would go see a show in a tattoo parlor and sit on the floor and watch a play. And I went to a mechanic's garage and sat in the grease and watched a play and on and on and on. And I realized my being there wasn't necessary. They were still going to perform the play. So it was environmental theater, but it wasn't really depending upon me being there. So I thought I would like to create a show where the audience needs to be there yeah. to put on the music, to become the community of others, to hold things, to light, light the, the way. Yeah, I like um, that very much. Yeah, so it was kind of a response to immersive theater I was seeing and feeling unsatisfied with. Um, and as you know, this is not my comfort zone. This is not what I have done through my career. But I thought, now or never, let's try it. And As you know, the German audience does not understand English so perfectly as it would be needed for your play, because you like to play with language, with words, yeah. and you're, you are quick in, your, quick in your head and in your voice. So what is your impression about the German audience? I, you know, years ago, I played at the Vienna Festival when Marie Zimmermann had mm -hmm. brought me there. And after the show, and it was very dense language because that's what I do. I write. I love language. And most puppeteers don't. I know for many of my peers, puppetry is a visual performance medium, not so much about language. 
But for me, it's always about language. Anyway, at the Vienna Festival, uh, I did a performance and went outside after, and there was a young man, and I said, how was it? And he said, well, it's like surfing. I'm with you above the water for a long time, and then we go underwater and I'm drowning and I don't understand a thing and I come back and I'm above water again. And I loved that. So I always keep that in mind. I, I, know, I know when the audience is back in and I know sometimes when they're <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> under the water. So you told me that yesterday there was one performer who did not want to give back his puppet. And I must say these puppets, you hand out puppets to each yeah. uh, person in the audience. The puppets are marvelous. Each puppet is different. Originally, we were going to make some molds, uh, four different heads, and just cast them and, you know, change them a little bit. Um, but I had been on tour for a couple of years and hadn't been in my studio and I hadn't sculpted. So I just started practice sculpting and I had a wonderful assistant. And it took him over two years because all of those puppets I would sculpt And then he would put on five layers of paper mache with paper that big over and over. So I think he did maybe a thousand layers of paper mache over two years. But it became obvious early on that they should all be different. Yeah. So I sculpted a hundred and twenty heads. <laughs> Which is mad. It's yeah. mad, right? Yeah. So a one hundred and twenty heads would mean You could play for 120 people, not more. We, we had extras and some that we didn't like when they were finished. And we assumed, we assumed that people might, have once in a while, put them in their purse. We've never had they that happen. They have so many, they have so many, um, how would you call that? They are, they are so expressive and they have an own character. Every, every, each puppet has a completely different character. It's nice, too, because it is supposed to be your other. So it's fun to give a big man a little girl, you know, and, and a stylish woman a rough man, you know, to, <laughs> for them to be something other than what, they, what their had, visage is. I had a puppet. I was looking at this puppet and I thought, oh my God, what is this? A puppet that was always looking like this. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's the complete opposite of, yeah. of me. So do you really look at the people coming? And uh, then sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, but as you know, the first show was a bit long. Last night was faster. So last night it was more this. Mm -hmm. What's important for me is not so much matching the puppet and the person, but that I make eye contact with everyone when I give it to them. Yeah. yeah. The people enjoy so much this atmosphere. And I remember when you were saying at the end, it is always, this is me. All is me, yeah. all the puppets. I got the feeling that you might be the, yeah, the, the master of ceremony for the audience to experience emotions. Yeah. Is that your duty? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Because it's always... The greatest delight, certainly in other work that I've done, when I hear the audience listening to a puppet character, because that's the breath, when the audience believes in that character or is focused so intently. So when, it, when an audience feels that, that's my success, you know? And yeah, that's great. And also intellectual, in an intellectual way your uh, last this production has so much to do with uh, with Shakespeare for example you, the side story when you decide to take the hand puppets the glove puppets yes uh, normally you work with marionettes right yes Or, so I've always done some hand puppets always since my first shows that I toured as a teenager were hand puppet shows um, And, and so I like mixing them more and more. I, in fact, during the pandemic, I built a small salon hand puppet show, just hand puppets, that I could set up in someone's house or a bar. And I wouldn't have done that if I'd been locked up for two years. But it's been great fun to okay. do that. Yeah. And do you have anybody to, to, to help you with 
thinking of a new concept or we call that in Germany we have dramaturgs. Yes, I worked with a dramaturg for 21 years and she was my complete <clears throat> other artistically and she died three years ago. Oh. Uh, just when we started working on this actually. So it took me a long time to write this because I was lost. Uh, but I realized I had to change the mechanics of how I wrote. I was writing like this on my keyboard and it was awful and awful and awful. And then I realized it was a play about handwritten love letters. So I got a tablet of yellow paper and a pen and I started writing the script. And so that's what hangs above us is the original yeah. script. Um, so just changing the mechanics helped a lot. Yeah. You were traveling a lot before pandemic. Yeah. Um, you went to many different festivals in different countries. Now uh, you came to Bochum. Have you had any impression in your, in your head how Bochum would be like or look like or how this festival would be like? And how did this change? Or? I had no sense of the city. Um, I had a sense what the audience might be like. Uh, I have to say, even the photographs of the room were the big draw for me. Mm. Uh, I didn't know it would be this good because I have a feeling no other presenter could ever find me this room. So, you're the star. All you're right. the star. And the machine in the back. The She machine. She's a star too. A star, uh, what is it? Steampunk. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Great. It's really. perfect. And because the play is about a secret meeting, it's almost an advantage that the audience is masked. So oh, we don't yeah. know each other's identity, you yeah. know? And did you ever have a performance where the people really looked, what, watched the performance through the eyes of their puppets? Yes, yes. It's very, sometimes, because I'm gone at the end of the performance, but Crystal, my stage manager, who monitors people putting the puppets back. She said there's been some very moving goodbyes oh. when they say goodbye to their puppet. Um, almost reverential, like a, a funeral in a way. So it's Great. nice. So we will have two more performances of yours. And I'm looking forward to it so much. Me too. And oh, it's so good to have you. I am so honored to be here.